All right, we got uh, Keith Lee did a statement on his uh, Twitter where I guess the biggest revelation was that uh, all of the medical bills associated with his heart issues over the last year, he noted that he paid for out of his own pocket. Yeah, I was really surprised to see that um, because if the heart issues stem from COVID... And the COVID was from the job because, you know, his, his, it came from an outbreak. Um, you know, one would think that the, the company would have paid them. Um, you know, it's not, I mean, it's like, I think that the moral obligation should always be that if you're injured in a match working for a company, the company should pay the medical. Um, I think that just makes sense. Um, but, this is not as cut and dried as that would be but i was very surprised when i saw that in you know when he when he made that statement because i would have thought that um you would just think you know what i mean that the wwe would have paid his medical bills because i'm sure that they were not sure would uh, think that wouldn't you yeah i i would think um I would just think that, yeah. I would just be logical to come to that conclusion, but uh, he said not the case. I mean, in the 80s, no. You know what I mean? Like in the 80s and even the 90s, I mean, we knew WWE wouldn't, um, but that was a different era. Um, since then, you know, it just seemed like, you know, it was, they would, but they didn't. So, um, yeah, it was, it was surprising. And I'm sure that those bills, you know, heart issues and everything like that don't come cheap. And, and you know, that's the other thing is like, I wonder I wonder if that played a part in his being cut is is that I mean it probably you know everything does because him being cut was I mean I can't say shocker shocker but it wasn't a name that I him complaining that he had to pay for his own what are you saying might have played a part in him being cut um, the heart issues, the fact, he, the fact he had heart issues. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, but, but I mean, well, it's hard to say. I mean, they, he did come back. He did do matches. And they did I give mean, him, they did give him a renewed push, which, which yeah, they you, gave him a new name. They gave him everything. So, I mean, it would seem weird unless there was like a flare up or something for them to have done that. But I mean, if there was a flare no, up, then that's the last time you want to do it. Yeah, no, but, but I think the thing is, is that, um, you know, maybe somebody like thought about like, you know, what, it, you know, because because they've ever since like Jerry Lawler, you know, they've been very concerned about things like that um, with talent. So, you know, but but yeah, they, they did bring him back and they did put him in the ring. He did get cleared. Um, So, you know, who knows? Who knows? But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see again, like. um you know, I, mean, I kept like saying, like, when we went through all those names and everything like that, and I thought that, like, you know, of all the people that that got cut, you know, like I think I said, like him and um, Ember Moon would be like the two that I would kind of like if I was AEW. Those would be like the probably the two highest on the list of people that I would be interested in. Um, but with Keith, I mean, the one thing with Keith is, is that you know, I keep thinking of Keith as the Keith Lee that I saw, you know, all the time, whether it was PWG or Revolution Pro or everywhere that this guy went and he was having just killer matches um you know and he was ready to go to new japan and everything like that but wwe called and you know you would think for a lot of people when wwe call <coughs> called it was always like that thing in the back of my mind going like well you know <coughs> it's 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 uh you know it's it, it it's you know you can't turn it down you've got to go but there's a track record there, especially for people of certain size, where you just kind of go like, yeah, you know, you may you may be super, but, you know, you're lim- you're limited there. With Keith, I thought, you know, because Keith and Walter were both, like, tearing up the independent scene. And it was like, these guys are going to go to WWE, and they're going to be stars. You know, it's like, I would have no reservation for them. I mean, Keith, as big and agile as he was and everything like that. Um, and then, you know, Walter just being Walter. And, you know, Walter, um, I mean, the the deal with Walter is unique in the sense that I think that if Walter did not have the attitude Walter has, that he would probably be a big star in the main roster right now because, you know, there is no hold back, um, you know, of, of size because, you know, he's a big dude and Keith's a big dude too. 
Um, but I think the thing with, with, you know, Walter does not want to move to the United States. He wants to keep his family there and he's willing to come to the United States for a period of time, but, but not live here. And he would, you know, when he signed, it was essentially that he was going to work NXT UK and he was going to be the big, big star there because he could work NXT UK and, and be home. You know, I mean, it's not far away. They weren't, you know, they weren't working every single night and things like that. So that's why he went. And, and in that sense, it wasn't the worst idea. And he got and he also got paid. You know, Walter got paid a lot, lot more than the rest of those NXT UK guys. So, you know, it was financially worth it. But, um, you know, but that's why, you know, I mean, if, if, if it was a normal situation, I'm, I would strongly suspect Walter would be on the main roster. Now, would Vince you know look at his body and then all of a sudden like do like oh we can't push him i mean it's possible i mean it really is possible now with keith um yeah i mean i thought i thought he was going to make it big but it's been you know the thing that that you got to remember is it's it's been several years since we've seen that keith lee so i don't know especially you know when you get older and everything like that and he's a heavy guy and all that that maybe you know, we don't know. I mean, I, I, I would, I would suspect that the Keith Lee that we will see is much, much better than the Keith Lee we have seen, because all the things I remember him doing, he never does, or he's, you know, he he did do mo some of it in NXT and very, very little of it on the main roster. So I like to think, oh well, you know, he can revert back to being that other Keith Lee that I saw. And and if he can, you know, obviously he'd be a great fit for any company. You know, just let him do it. Um, but I wonder, you know, it's like it is a couple of years. So I, that thought did pop into my head. But, you know, you you know, again, he was very, boy, was that guy impressive, like in, in PWG with, with everyone. I mean, he'd go up for the, you know, he'd have, he'd have good matches with everybody. And, um you know, was and the and he'd make the other guy. You know, he'd go up. He'd you know, for as big as he is, he'd go up and guys would slam him and stuff like that. Which obviously in WWE they want 170 pound guys slamming 335 pound guys. But, um, but you know, he would do it and it looked good on the shows. It's just like with WWE, they don't want big guys doing that. Um, they also don't want big guys flying around. And he could do that too. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.